two hardware news videos in one day. That's right, with CES coming up, we got even more leaks in the last 12 hours or so since I already put out a video. That one was talking about all sorts of things. Go ahead and check it out. I can probably link it up here. Anyway, in this one, uh, let's do a few fast things, and we're going to talk about Intel's ARC announcement for tomorrow seems to have leaked out early. But anyway, we've got another tease here from Intel about them launching an i9-12900KS. This is the S series, is like a binned CPU that is going to be basically your 12900K, but they've guaranteed it to be able to clock super high. Uh, up to 5.5 gigahertz boost clock and 5.2 gigahertz all p-core boost. And this is coming from a, I, I found it at WCCF Tech, but this is coming from a tweet directly from Intel saying their 12th gen Intel Core desktop processors are topping best CPU lists and widely available to gamers and enthusiasts. And we're not done yet. Next stop up to 5.5 gigahertz. And then that comes with a screenshot giving us some specs. And that, that's where we are getting that from. So interesting. We're going to have an even higher end version of the 12900K. Uh, fun for people looking for that absolute highest end chip out there. Speaking of looking for the absolute highest end, time for you to uh, you know throw away your 3090 and get a 3090 Ti because you no longer have the fastest GPU out there. This one's going to be about 7.7% faster. So your 3090 is definitely garbage now because you know the main reason you'd want a 3090 is to have the fastest GPU around. So now that you don't anymore, it's garbage. Better get the TI version, right? Right, right, okay. <laughs> anyway, um, so expect to see this announcement tomorrow. The source on this one seems to just be video cards claiming it's, it's from themselves. So somehow, uh, they seem to have this info, I, I think, a little bit ahead of time. I'd imagine we get the actual official announcement tomorrow during NVIDIA's press conference for CES. And um, yeah, it's it's just faster GDDR6 6, 6X memory. It's clocked to 21 gigabits per second, and it has a few more CUDA cores. This is the entire GA102 chip rather than having any little bits missing or disabled. And it's on a 384-bit memory bus leading to these calculations. And it's even pictured here. And to me, it looks basically like a 3090 Ti. Now, one thing that's interesting here is we should only need the memory modules to be on one side of the card instead of both sides of the card, which I think should help the cooling be better. And in my other video today, I talked about um, there being a kingpin model that's been leaked to have two 12-pin connectors going up to possibly over a thousand watts power draw, at least the connectors could de deliver that. We'll see if we, if we need it. And some custom models will be recommending thousand watt power supplies for these things. Um, now, th this Founders Edition is apparently only going to be using a single 16 pin power connector, which could feed up to 450 watts. Okay, so that's still uh, a lot. I'm wondering if this is what we're going to see from high end chips uh, from the 4000 series. We'll see, because the power draw on these high-end GPUs is getting a little bit crazy out there. Anyway, we should see more info coming up. Video Cards has a nice chart here comparing it to the uh, you know other high-end uh, NVIDIA cards. You'll notice it's just got two extra GPU clusters compared to the normal 3090, getting you those few more CUDA cores, uh, right? And anyway, you get the idea. And we're expecting it to actually go on sale this month, shortly after the announcement. Speaking of going on sale, um, so we're expecting to hear a lot about the non-K versions of Alder Lake chips. I've been very interested in the 12400F, so that meaning it will not have integrated graphics, so you're paying less for it, um, as, a, as a budget gaming CPU that's going to really deliver. In leaked benchmarks, things have looked great, and we're seeing now the official pricing sheet uh, leaked early here. And notice that the uh, RCP pricing, now my understand here is that's if you're ordering a thousand units. So this is what uh, retailers who are, you know, buy, these are the, I think the price that retailers will buy these from uh, Intel at these prices if they're ordering at least a thousand units. So then your actual sale price to consumers could be a bit higher. Uh, but we're seeing that 12400F at 167 and the 12400 non-K, but also non-F, meaning it has the integrated chips. Again, non-K means it, it doesn't overclock. Um, I just realized my fat head's in the way here. Ah! Anyway, um, 
<laughs> so, so we can see the 12400 here. Um, you're paying enough extra for the integrated chip that they're nice to have, but if you're going for a super budget build, uh, that doesn't look uh, too bad. Anyway, feel free to you know pause the video and take a look at all the details on this chart, and I'll also link this article in my description. Now, this is not the only chart that they uh, had here. Um, we also see it uh, uh, go up into these higher end, uh, well, these uh, other chips I don't think fit on that other page. If we're jumping over here. Oh, these are the T, okay, these are the T versions. And then over here, we actually see some performance charts. These are the ones directly from Intel. And what's kind of interesting here is that they're comparing it to an i5, uh, okay, they're comparing an i5 20, uh, 12600 and a Core i9 12900 and a Ryzen 7 5700G. Now notice that at least in this chart that's leaked early, hopefully the official charts um, have more info, uh, I'm not seeing any info on like what sorts of memory or anything like that is being used. And again, it's up against a 5700G. Now that kind of makes sense because that's cheaper than like an actual 5800X or even a, you know, uh, 5600X, I think it's even even cheaper than that, isn't it? Um, but anyway, so, so keep in mind that these uh, G processors, the APUs don't perform as well uh, as their non-graphics included uh, Ryzen 5000 chips. So just keep that in mind. And we also have another chart here um, uh, comparing them in a couple other tests. This is Puget Bench, uh, Puget Bench Premier Pro. That was Lightroom Classic and Nero Score. So we can see some performance up against those. Uh, interesting, but you know, I want to see third-party benchmarks, and personally, I'm more interested in gaming stuff anyway. These are obviously productivity, and it's only up against a 5700G without specified the, uh, specifying the memory and all of that. So take it for what you will. Now let's get to this. This is interesting. I'm so interested in what we get from Intel Arc GPUs. And apparently, the folks over at Video Cards here say that they've obtained a copy of tomorrow's press release covering the announcement of Intel Arc GPUs. So um, they've apparently got this early. They have the entire press release. So, hey, let's take a look. So Intel marked a new era in the discrete graphics market by announcing its shipment of Intel Arc graphics, codenamed Arc Alchemist, to OEM customers. So in other words, they're actually all uh, already, let's see, announcing the shipment. So did they actually ship them? Did they ship them and they're just now announcing it? I feel like this could be worded clearer, but possibly implying they've actually shipped them to their OEM customers. Anyway, Intel Arc is the brand for Intel's upcoming consumer high performance graphics product. I'm assuming if you're watching my video here, you probably know Intel's coming out with their Arc GPUs. Um, now here's somewhat interesting information. Uh, there's gonna be uh, more than 50 new mobile and desktop customer d uh, designs announced. So I think those will be our partner models from like, okay, Acer, Asus, Clevo, Clevo? I don't even know what that is. Dell, Gigabyte, I don't know, hi higher either. HP, Lenovo, Samsung, MSI, blah, blah, blah. Exciting time for gamers. Okay, so here's something a, a little bit more interesting. So they're talking about, okay, yes, they have hardware accelerated ray tracing, which the rumors have, have already been talking about. And I think Intel's already announced. Um, and then they're gonna have their XESS, their super sampling, as well as deep link technology. We'll talk about more of that in a second. Now here's some new information. It's looking like they're saying that, um, and this is the only game they're naming specifically, at least in this announcement, that Death Stranding is implementing XESS. So that might be their like flagship launch title, like, hey, Death Stranding's got XESS. It also has DLSS, guys. So this is gonna give us an opportunity to do side-by-side -side XCSS versus DLSS comparisons, which is very exciting. I'm hoping I can get my hands on an Arc GPU uh, as soon as they come out and do some testing on it myself. I'm also very interested in that we've seen the XCSS should have fallback support on NVIDIA and AMD GPUs. So I'm really hopeful that XCSS will give AMD GPUs um, a stronger competitor to DLSS than even FSR does. Because FSR is, is good 
but it doesn't uh, use TAA, it doesn't use the uh, motion vectors, and also doesn't have any AI assistance to the reconstruction, whereas XESS does, and I believe it's even developed by one of their main engineers, was actually poached from the DLSS uh, development team, and I think was even the lead developer on that. So that's really interesting to me. By the way, when I say there's fallback support, it means it should run quicker on Intel GPUs, but should still run on NVIDIA or AMD, which is kind of mandatory, because if you have 0% market share, you need to be able to convince uh, developers that it's worth implementing, right? <laughs> um, anyway, it also says they're gonna be implementing optimizations for the 12th gen Intel Core processors, and it'll be interesting to see if they do that in further games. Uh, hopefully optimization means actually just making it run better, not somehow handicapping uh, AMD alternatives. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm too conspiracy theory driven here. Anyway, so yeah, they're excited to announce that. President 505 games, great. Anyway, um, they're not announcing any other actual games, although we have seen it already demonstrated in, oh, what is that game called? Rift? Rift something? Rift Breaker. Rift Breaker. There's already been a demo of it running in Rift Breaker, so I don't think Death Stranding is going to be the only game. Um, but we're seeing them announcing studios that are, read this carefully, committed to supporting the technology, which is not the same thing as saying it will support the technology immediately at launch, right? So that's a big question mark here is how many games at launch and then how long does it take to get into more games? Although I think Nvidia, uh, sorry, Intel seems pretty serious about this uh, competition, so I think they're they are going to be working really hard, I think, to get those out there and get get it running in games. But here's a bunch of games on, on the list here, including big ones like Ubisoft. Ubisoft, I guess that would be Pub hey PUBG Studios. That's interesting. So, uh, uh, we've already seen Kojima Productions with Death Stranding. Some other ones that I haven't heard as much about, but there you go. Now, if you're like me and you're like, wait, what is Deep Link technology? Um, I believe the idea here is that I think if you have a in integrated chip, uh, like the integrated graphics, so the non-F uh, Intel processor, right? I think it can now share some of the workload with your um, discrete ARC GPU. I'm not sure whether that'll function in gaming, but they're mentioning it here in DaVinci Resolve. So I actually use DaVinci Resolve for my video editing. Um, and so it's saying that they're going to support deep link hyperencode, which uses integrated and discrete graphics processors together to accelerate the creation by simultaneously encoding uh, the same video stream. So that's interesting. So just another thing to keep in mind, and it makes sense to me for Intel to try to take advantage of the fact that they produce CPUs and GPUs to provide some kind of you know synergy there uh, for those things to like combo and give you an added bonus for bundling the two. Not necessarily something I like to see in the market, but it makes sense for them to do that, encourage you to build the whole Intel system. All right, guys, this video is already running a bit long, so I'm going to end it. What do you guys think about all this in the comment section? I'm super excited to hear from Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA and their full releases tomorrow and see if we get some more details. Have an excellent day.